What's good, Liberators? Fing is here with a very special edition of DX2 Demon Review, as this will cap off what I am terming Hell Week, in order of our Lord and Savior, the King of Hell himself, Beelzebub, and all he's done to enrich our lives in so many, many ways. Uh, I'm putting out videos every day, this week, which is not something I normally do, because if I was doing that normally, there's not a lot of new content that comes out for this game. So my videos would get pretty redundant, pretty fast, if I kept doing that. So we're going to go back to a more normalized schedule from here on out. But we're going to go out with the bang, talking about the tyrant Beelzebub, not to be confused with the tyrant Beelzebub, so we're just gonna we're gonna coin him Hyper Beelzebub to just dispel any confusion that Sega caused because they caused it by not giving him some kind of moniker to denote him from the the four star variant that the game originally came with. Here we go, the King of Hell, known as the Lord of Flies, and yes, we're gonna read this same description that we read read for the last two Beelzebubs. For this one, just for posterity's sake. By making them carry the souls of the dead, he keeps the flies he rules in order. In the Bible, he is mentioned as one of the most formidable demons of high rank. It is also said that he was once the Lord Baal of Canaan, who was punished and became Beelzebub. In rebellion, his enemies plotted to seal away his powers and were successful by forcing a part of him to take on human form, but was able to return to his former glory by fusing back together. With his long-lost powers at hand, he now seeks to reclaim his throne, and no one deserves it more. Let's get into his mechanics, because he is a he is a unique one. I'll give him that. Uh, as you can see, he's a magic guy. He got a great magic stat, natural 220. I've got it topped off at 240 with me, Thomas, but with the brand new Sin Infusion mechanic, you can crank that up an extra 20 points to cap out at 260, which would make him an absolute terror with, with his very unique set of skills. I put another 20 in Vitality because he's got a unique set of skills that rewards... His durability. If he can survive two to three waves of enemy attack, he can just murder everyone. So keeping him alive is of paramount importance if you want to run him that way. And we're going to talk about that because the way I see it, there's two ways, there's two two styles you can probably go about with this guy. And I dumped the last ten into luck because I wanted to run him slow at first to see how he did in his slow variant, but you can also run him speedster. That's the thing about this guy. He, he can go both ways. <laughs> and you, need, you really, this is what I recommend. Pick a speed, okay? None of this, don't, 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 don't miss me with this mid-range nonsense. You know, you know what your mid-range speed team is? To me? It sucks. It sucks. PvP is designed you either go first, you either plan to go first, or you plan to go second. And it's hard enough to base a team around one of those things rather than building a team to have flexibility on both ends of the scale. So just pick one and then focus on getting your speed as either high as possible or low as possible to ensure that your plan can fire off every time. So... If you're going to run him Speedster, dump that 20 into Agility and then get on that Sin Infusion, get into Tokyo Abyss and crank that up to a generous 2010, which, uh, 202, which ain't bad at all. His speed is comparable to Hiramasakado, to Asura Lord, to that fucking purple bug, Angra. So I'm sure you've seen them on all kinds of Speedster teams. So you can slot this guy in there just is easily and he nulls physical which we don't care about and repels light and dark which we also don't care we i shouldn't say we i know some people some people that's the, 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 me i i 
don't care about. Let's check out the skills du jour. The transferable is Butcher, plus 20% damage to skills that target all our random enemies. Fantastic, because he has a skill that targets all enemies. For his first unique skill, the King of Hell heals 800 HP upon receiving the first killing blow. So he has an Enduring Soul, plus plus built right into him you drop him to zero he bounces right back with 800 hp very very nice activates the following chain effect when attacking first at the beginning of battle recovers three mp huge for pvp purposes where if you go first you start out with a natural five and increase his own party's attack by 20% and reduces defense of all enemies by 20% so he has Auto offensive cry when attacking first. Gets three at three MP to allow him to use his unique skill. And he auto offensive cries awesome to the max. Awesome. Also, activates the following chain effect at the beginning of a battle if the enemy attacks first. Reduces enemy press turn icon. Built in intimidating stance. Plus 20% to defense of all party members and reduces attack of all enemies by 20%. A built in defensive cry, which is instrumental for those slow teams need to survive that first wave in order to launch your devastating counterattack. So, this is great. This is huge. Gives him some nice flexibility that you. It's. it's it's nice. I'm a big fan of choice. And when you got someone like this who gives you that choice, it's fantastic. But there is one thing you need to look at. Make sure you, you understand if you're going to run him slow. His agility of 162, innately, it's a problem. You got a epitome of fortitude is probably a good choice in this regard. Because if you're planning to run slow, you want to... You need to knock that speed down. An epitome of fortitude. I believe it's epitome of fortitude is the skill that reduces your effect on battle speed by 25%. So that's something you're really going to want to consider if you're going to run him slow roll for his second and final unique skill, the Death Flyers, which I prefer to term Murder Flies because it just pops a bit more inflicts almighty magic damage with a power of 110 on all enemies and reduces attack defense and evasion and accuracy of all enemies by 20 percent if the attack is successful for three turns so an almighty sweep attack plus stabilitate fantastic nullifies all death prevention skills so your endures your enduring souls even the built-in indoors enduring souls of the new Beezlebub and human Beezlebub, yeah, you're, you're just dead. No, no, they eat. Beezlebub don't give a fuck. You're dead. This skill will gain one boost level at the start of own turn. And this is this is where Death Flies gets stalled out a little bit. Because it's not, he doesn't gain a boost level every time he uses the attack. He gets it at the start of every turn and not his individual turn so you can like pass to him and boost it no it's every every wave so you go you get a boost level your enemy goes you go you get another boost level so in order to boost his level up to boost level three the enemy is going to be attacking you at least twice assuming you attack first and three times if you are going second in the battle so that's something you're going to want to factor in if you're going to try and make him if you're going to try and build a team around stalling the enemy long enough to get murder flies to boost level three and then just wiping them out because that's that's uh that's one way to go about it the the two ways i see you running him is either you go full magic attack you just make him a brutalizer he's just attacking debuffing and just bludgeoning the enemy with his high magic set or 
you take it back a little bit, you reduce that magic attack power in favor of HP percentage, defense percentage, magic defense percentage, and you and you surround him with a bunch of revivers, and you keep him up till turn till he gets his third boost level, and then just murder flies, which. Oh, hey, I could I could see people pulling that out. It can happen. It's usually protracted PvP battles. I, I don't see them too often just because I run really high physical, really high speed. Usually it's over pretty quick, and that's most PvP battles. But stall teams, hey, run him with the Moiré sisters, and there, you know, you got that Rukhamdra Lachesis. You got that Clotho just bringing people back every every turn, healing everyone. Yeah, you, you could you could definitely, definitely make that work. So boost level one, no extra effect. You just get the natural. Boost level two, power increases to 130, so an additional 20 power on his attack. And boost level three, the big one, adds 100% chance to inflict mortal, a.k.a. murder, on hit enemies if the attack is successful. And if you level this up to its maximum, you get plus 12% damage and the essential MP cost minus one. That is absolutely paramount. This thing costs nine, uh, eight MP naturally. That's, that's huge, especially in PvP. You're going to want that reduction in MP. So, you, so if you want to, you can run them with spell brands. And even if, you, even if you're drained by Undead Alice you can still pop off death flies on your first turn of attacks for his archetype skill i've got him in the psychic and null mortal which 99 times out of 100 if you're facing off against this guy in pvp this is what you're going to see null mortal is just too rare of a skill only a few demons are even allowed access to it it's just too unique to pass up and too effective in pvp to to ignore. So this is probably what you're going to be dealing with should you run into this guy in PvP. And for his transferables, as I ran him on a slow team at first, I gave him Endure and Enduring Soul to give him that triple tap protection. So doing this, he can get dropped to zero HP three times before the fourth time kills him. I just wanted to make him as annoying as possible because I wanted to see boost level three murder flies in action and it was a lot of fun but that's just one way to run them that's the more okay you set them up to be stall you give them more hp you give them life brands right you play kind of defensively you get that third turn and then murder everyone that's that's that kind of setup here but you can also slap on almighty survivor which is a great choice for him because it's 15 percent Damage increase to Almighty Attacks, I believe, plus Endure. So, hey, that's great. Uh, Epitome of Fortitude, which I mentioned earlier, slows down that battle speed because he has a... For a slow roll team, 160 agility is, is really high. But if you're running him on a speedster team, oh, you give him speedster. You know, if you're trying to go first and you're just trying to brutalize your enemy, you know, give him speedster. And... Uh, Almighty Survivor would be a great choice there, too, because it increases his damage. If you're running him on Speedster, you want to put out as much pain as humanly possible. First wave. But you could also give him Serial Killer, since he's already got the Butcher built in. Give him Serial Killer, 10% extra damage to attacks that sweep or target random enemies. All good options. And those are, those are the two lanes I see this guy taking. If you've got some wacky ideas, y'all let me know about that. As for brands, I was running them slow at first. I've got a PvP video featuring that slow roll team. I'll link it down below. And for that, I used life brands and slapped on some guard brands just to make him a little more stubborn. That's mainly what I was going for, but I did kind of split the difference giving him magic attack percentage boosts on the, the hands and legs where they apply so that he could hit. But what you see in that video is not his full potential. 
You know, I could have given him spell brands and had him smacking much, much harder. I could have given him uh, Almighty Survivor if I had it. I don't, but 15% of damage. I could have added on Serial Killer to that for an extra 10% damage. And you would have seen some much, much bigger numbers. So the numbers you saw there, that's that's on the the lower end of what this guy can put out as I wanted to see boost three murder flies in action so I focused more on him staying alive over magic attack for the panels I went for panel two off rip but it's uh, debatable depending on how you're gonna run him so panel one activates the following chain effect when own HP is at 80% or under at the end of an enemy's turn, heals you 25% of own HP and recovers 3 MP, which is fantastic because if your enemy's taking a turn, odds are Beelzebub's going to get a little shrapnel at the very least. Odds are he's going to go below 80% health. I mean, that ain't a lot. You know, that's him taking 400, 500 damage, give or take, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, he's, and he's just going to perk right back up after that and get a bunch of MP, which is fantastic. It plays into his stall tactic, if you will, if you're going to try and do that murder flies approach. That is huge. Keeps him going like the Energizer Bunny. And for panel two, which I chose just because... Ah, I just... I just couldn't pass up that ailment nullification just to stick it to Angra. Adds Null Mute, Null Bind, Null Charm, a.k.a. the worst of the ailments and the biggest headaches to us all. This makes him completely immune to all of that nonsense. So you can just set it, forget it, not worry about it. Focus on bigger things like his magic attack stat or his health. And panel 1 and panel 3, of course, give you HP boost. Panel 2... Gives him that nice extra 100 magic attack. So a nice added bonus there. And panel 3, plus 20% to almighty damage, plus 20% to max HP. I don't need to tell you why that's a good thing. And before we wrap it up, let's check out those other archetypes. And see what we got. Okay. Okay, for the Aragami, we have Ars Magna. Inflicts almighty magic damage on a single enemy with a power of 200. He's got a beast magic attack, uh, magic attack stat. Single target almighty with a power of 200. It's, it's, it's okay, I guess. But notice it costs 7 MP. Right? The same cost as a fully leveled up murder flies. So... Hmm? Uh, uh, uh. Eh, I, uh, mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that. I, I, I get it. I get it. You gave him the single, the big single target. He's got a nice little sweep, almighty sweep. That one gives him the nice single target. I, I get it. I'm just not a fan. For the protector, luster candy increases attack, defense, evasion, accuracy. All party members by twenty percent. And again, I get it. I get it. It gives him both debilitate. And Luster Candy. So in two turns, you can fully debuff the enemy and fully buff yourself. I get it, but uh, for PvP, just that um, you've got auto skills that can that can handle this. And there are so many demons that have attacks with buffs, debuffs built into them. And the the turn economy, right? Your action economy is a big deal in PvP. So this, using a turn of his to not only not attack and debuff, but the buff, as I, I get it. I really do. I understand what, what they were thinking with this. And it's a fun idea. Hey, my Beelzebub can debuff everything and buff everything. Hell yeah. I just, for PvP, yeah, not, not feeling it. And the Psychic Null Mortal, which I give Fingers seal of approval for PvP purposes... Of course, because it is just too rare a skill. It's too rare, rare a skill to ignore. That's why every demon whose psychic archetype gives you Null Mortal is the only variant you see in PvP. Same with Intimidating Stance. If a demon has the potential to have that skill, 
to get in that skill because it's just too damn good for PvP to pass up. And the Elementalist archetype, Drain Physical, and it's, it's a thing. Turns his Null Physical into Drain Physical. You know, I could see people running him with Demiurge, for example. Like, yeah, I, could, I get it. He could. I'm not going to dump on the, the Elementalist archetype this time around because I do see him being paired with Demiurge to pr uh, a good effect. I can I can see it happening. I don't have Demiurge, so I haven't I can't field test this, but I I'm familiar with Demiurge and I can see it. So if you've got them, run them, let me know how it goes. And that is about that. The conclusion of Hell Week. The hyper Beelzebub, the Beelzebub we deserved from the beginning, but only got three and a half years later because uh, the original demon development team from Sega did not know what they had. But they made it up to us, and I say better late than never. Don't get captured. <laughs>